Hey guys, Landon Rivers here. Hey, have you ever been the escort for a fat old rich guy because you're young and needed the money? Well, today we're doing just that. Join us as we play the Huntress and guide Marcus the Merchant through Saladia Village because he lost his business ledger. Escort Marcus is a sort of on-rails mission because Marcus walks at his own pace throughout the level and we're expected to take his lead. So the idea of how to get through the level the fastest is to keep Marcus always moving, which means completing the different stages of the level quickly as he visits different waypoints to minimize his wait time. This is the most technical level in the entire run, but we've got our current methods down to a science, so it'll be a smooth ride through. This is the first level, which involves character selection and inventory management. Also, if you're running this as an individual level run, as will be with all levels going in the future, be sure you only work with the characters and equipment available to you when you unlocked the level. So you'd only be able to use the knight and the huntress for this level, and a very low tier of weapons. The easiest character to play this level is the huntress, due to her long range attacks and guaranteed kills. As you're spamming enter to get to the character selection screen, you'll want to be careful to stop spamming enter as soon as the eagle fades in. That's when you get control of the character selection menu. Not being careful of this, you could select the knight on accident and maybe start the level on accident as well. Select the Huntress, and now we'll configure her loadout for the level. We should have a total of at least 160 gold, which is what we got from the last level. First we select her bow, which there's only one of right now, but take a look at how we select it. We could press enter and select the weapon, then press enter again, or from this main menu we could actually press the right and left arrow keys to select our weapons and armor much quicker. This actually ends up saving quite a few seconds in later levels during inventory setup. We're also going to use a variety of arrows, but we won't have many, so we'll be playing conservatively with our shots. Go down to our ammo, and because there's an arrow menu inside, we can't use the arrow keys to bypass this step. First, we'll buy some burst arrows, which we can load multiples of at a time to fire a fan of arrows at enemies. They're the cheapest arrows, but we only want 20. Press the right arrow key to scroll to the 20. Next, we don't want fire arrows, but we do want grenade arrows, the third one on the list. These will come in handy for instantly killing single weak targets and some close groups of enemies. We'll be using these the most, so we want to buy as many as possible, which would be 20 in our case. Much like pressing the right arrow takes you to the first item on the list, you can press the left arrow to go to the last item on the list, which you can't afford. So we press the left arrow when we get to the grenade arrow selection. Finally, we want to select sniper arrows. These arrows can do the most damage out of any weapon in the game, and you can zoom in to get a guaranteed headshot kill from a long distance. Thanks to the 10 gold you picked up, we can afford 5 sniper arrows. Press right or left on this slot to equip them. Press down and enter to return, press up twice to highlight enter game, and then we can enter. With this in mind and with a little bit of practice, your inventory selection should look a little something like this. We start the level with Marcus waiting to talk to us, and we initiate the conversation by passing over this wooden plank. He'll whine for a bit about getting jumped, and then meanwhile we will load up some burst arrows to use for later, then equip our grenade arrows. Marcus will start walking to the first waypoint, which is a door up ahead, and he has a radius that you must stay within for this opening part in order to keep him walking. Basically a hold my hand aura. But once he reaches this area, he walks on his own for the rest of the level. I like to tag along with him until he just reaches the start of this plant, then I know he'll be able to make it to that auto spot and I can head off and do some errands while staying in his radius up to that point. As soon as you or Marcus walks on the beginning of the bridge, an orc will round the corner. With a grenade arrow, a surefire way to ensure some damage, or basically a kill against an unarmored foe, is to aim the shot at the ground underneath them, as the arrows do splash damage as well as regular damage. It's much harder for grenade arrows to whiff than a regular arrow because of this. Head through the tunnel and do the same to this goblin that appears. Now, we want to work really quick on this next one. As soon as you kill that goblin, equip your sniper arrows with E, then you want to headshot this item idling goblin in the blacksmith shop unscoped. Marcus hates idle workers, and this goblin in particular would have blocked him later on. If you miss the shot, don't try again. You'll have another chance, albeit slim, to get him later. After you do this, rush back quickly to the door as Marcus is unlocking it. The timing on this method is strict, so make sure you're moving properly and killing quick. 
Now we're at a point where Marcus is waiting for us, so we need to complete this step as fast as possible. Run into the door while it's being opened if you made it in time, and prep a grenade arrow. As you come into this first staircase, there will be a goblin up top ready to pounce down. Quickly aim and shoot at the wall behind the goblin, or try to hit the goblin directly to take him out. Sometimes this quick shot is easier said than done. Head up the stairs, turn to the right, and hug the left wall, completely bypassing an orc who will throw a chair at you. Knock another grenade arrow and get ready to fire at an orc sleeping next to a fireplace. This is the most important mob of this room because right after you kill him, Marcus will start moving again. Kill the orc you dodged using a grenade arrow to the floor, and then the room will be cleared of enemies that may be in Marcus's path. Jump over the banister and behind Marcus as he makes his way up the stairs. Marcus is going to pass through and pick up his ledger, complain some more, then continue on through the village to find the gate key. There's a lot of prep work we need to do in a short amount of time, so exit outside and let's get to it. Head to the left and you'll see an armored orc and a goblin and charging across the bridge. Armored orcs most of the time take two grenade arrows to kill, so bear that in mind while taking the two out. You can try and bunch them together and maximize your splash damage from your grenade arrows. Head back around the blacksmith, and at this point, if you didn't kill the goblin the first time, try for another unscoped shot at him. If you miss again, you'll have one final shot. Leave the orc blacksmith completely alone, he's just doing his job and won't bother you. And if you kill him, you're just a real jerk. As Marcus is talking about his great relationship with his brother, head past the blacksmith, and as you pass this trigger area, two orcs, one armored and one unarmored, will spawn. Take them out with grenade arrows as well, or maybe try and finish one off with a sniper arrow if you can spare it. Then head back to the open area before the blacksmith. Wait right next to the wheel of the cart with your camera pointed at the direction Marcus will be coming from. Get your grenade arrows ready. You should have around 11 left at this point. We're going to get ready for an ambush. Three enemies will spawn when Marcus reaches the cart you're next to, and then Marcus will stop. An armored goblin, regular goblin, and an orc will jump out, and you must kill all three as quick as possible to get Marcus moving again. As soon as you see Marcus round the corner, pull your drawstring and aim a little above the boxes to the left. Let loose as soon as you see the goblin jump out, and you should score a direct hit, killing him instantly. This goblin is notorious for ending runs because he's known to jump jump backwards into the canal, and you have to chase him. So you explode his ass first before he has a chance to do anything. Now run towards the orc and let loose another grenade arrow to kill him, and then start walking backwards towards Marcus as you prep a final arrow for the glass goblin. Once all three are dead, bring your character behind this line parallel to the wheel, and Marcus will start moving to the next point. Head to the blacksmith again, and here is your last chance to kill the sleeping goblin with a sniper arrow if you miss them the first two times. If the deed is done, bring your character to right behind this line. Marcus will be heading this way, and a goblin will push some barrels at him. He will cry for his protector's aid, but what this translates to is you just need to be in his aura again for him to start moving. He will completely disregard the goblin shooting at him and put his mind back on the mission, seeking the gate key. So what do you do? The very instant you see the subtitle for... Help! Or... I don't want to die! Or... Have mercy on me! Start moving past that line because you will have already appeased Marcus. Marcus will reach this bulletproof wooden door which is locked and stop moving, waiting for you to somehow get to the other side. Head to this building door in the alley. An armored orc will be patrolling above, so we need to be ready for him in any position. Pull your drawstring as you enter and hop up the stairs to score some super jumps. Let loose and this will do the deed. If you miss or fail to kill him, try and dodge around and hope this mob doesn't come to bite you in the ass later in the level. Head to the ladder. Usually I can get up quickly by jumping onto the ladder and pressing space twice. Up we go and now we run across the rooftops, switching to our grenade arrows, which you should have six or so of left, and then we dodge this this goblin archer, hug the edge of the roof, jumping the gap at the end, and in between two goblins that pop out of the attic, let loose a grenade arrow to kill the second goblin coming out, and head on in. Now comes my favorite part of the entire run. Pull back on the drawstring and approach the hatch. Shoot the sleeping armored orc and drop down at the same time. Turn around quickly, pull back another arrow. Now for Trick Shot City. Jump the railing and explode this orc as he runs up the stairs. Quickly open the door and Marcus will start moving again. Head up the stairs because your first grenade arrow most likely did not kill the armored orc and one of the goblins may have followed him. Finish them off with a grenade arrow and jump the railing again. Head outside and use a final grenade arrow to pop a goblin that jumps on a box. Now switch to your burst arrows and charge up for a full shot against a final fiend. Start making your way to the checkpoint area.
You may need to do a little bit of cleanup before this point, but make it quick. A goblin from the rooftop or that patrolling orc may have found their way down here. Use a remaining grenade arrow or a sniper arrow to put this worry to rest. Marcus is going to be collecting the key in the building and making his way to the checkpoint area. This is the first part of the run where we use the cutscene exploit, which is the same as the revival exploit. You'll notice that if Marcus is walking along and we activate the checkpoint cutscene and spam enter to skip it, two seconds of in-game time will pass and Marcus will have jumped forward in his position. Because of this, we want to activate the checkpoint as soon as possible so we have the most time to prep. Once Marcus reaches this side of the bridge, pull back your drawstring full of burst arrows and get ready to fight this fuzzy creature known as a Nightcrawler. He's actually been a motif throughout the level behind the scenes and now he's making an appearance by jumping through the boards and... and falling back into the canal. Uh... This happens too often and is also a run killer. So you shoot his ass first for he has a chance to do anything. Yep, when he bops out and is in the air, you let loose like Legolas and murk his keister. Marcus will go, hmm, and then continue on. Wait for him at the gate and split when the screen fades to black. Marcus will pay you 150 gold for your services, which is just enough to afford the bow we need for the next level, so you don't need to pick up any gold throughout this level. Let's do one final analysis before we end so you're aware of this fact. The vast majority of the time made up in this level is from Marcus walking. Here's a list of all the times we need to wait for Marcus. It takes exactly 6 seconds for Marcus to whine and start walking with you. It takes 19 seconds for Marcus to walk towards the first door, which you'd be clearing ahead. It takes 30 seconds after you kill the sleeping orc for Marcus to enter the building, pick up the ledger, and make it down to the cart for the ambush point. It takes 6 seconds for him to walk to the blacksmith spot and get hit with the barrels. 7.5 seconds to walk to the locked door, 21 seconds after you open the locked door to pick up the key and walk to the final area, and 4.75 seconds to walk to the end. That's a total of 1 minute and 34.35 seconds where Marcus is moving. That means that your final time and the quick execution you do for this level will always be on top of that number. We are only just getting started. Join us in the next video as we steal back Marcus's treasure from a deserted temple and meet a new character. I'm Landon Rivers, and I'll see you there.